Welcome to V3's demonstration videos. In this video, we will create a 3D interlaced image using Adobe Photoshop CS6 extended from a layered Photoshop file. You will need to have a working version of Photoshop CS6 extended installed on your computer and have a working knowledge of Photoshop layers. On this project, our finished 3D image needed to be a landscape orientation with a print size of 4x6 at 300 dpi. Knowing the finished print size and resolution dpi or dots per inch are two important facts that you will need to know whenever you start a 3D design. Your canvas size needs to be slightly larger than the finished print size and start as a square. Earlier versions of Photoshop had undesirable results if the canvas was in landscape orientation. Out of habit, we always start our 3D design as a square. The DPI of your interlaced Photoshop image must match the output DPI of the printer used to print the 3D image created in Photoshop CS5 Extended. On this project, we will use either an HP OfficeJet Pro 8100 or a DNP DS40 die sub printer that both have a resolution of 300 DPI. If your printer resolution is different, you will need to adjust your settings. In order to download the PSD file, insert the project DVD into your computer and access the disk drive. Select the DVD contents folder and open the 3D Dinosaur file and save a copy to your desktop. Open the 4x6 test file that you downloaded. Check the image, image size to verify the size is 7x7 at 300 dpi. And check the image, mode is RGB. Next verify that each layer is turned on visible. Look over the project. Notice that the layers are in order with the top layer being the most forward layer in the 3D project and the bottom layer is the farthest, or the background. And that the edges of the layer elements are clean cuts, not blurred or jagged. Clean edges are important for great looking 3D project. Typical Photoshop layer effects like drop shadows and blurring produce a hazy ring around the layer elements when converted to 3D. We use the pen tool and pass to create layer elements with clean edges. Zoom in and check the image quality of the layers. Make sure you always use high res images. Next notice the depth settings and distance settings that will be discussed later in this video. For CS5 users, the term parallax has changed to depth, and the term focal plane has changed to distance, and the method to create a 3D postcard has changed as well. Now we will convert each layer to a 3D postcard. First, select the layers that will be converted to 3D postcards. This can be done one layer at a time, or all layers. Go to the 3D tab. If the 3D tab is not visible, go to the Windows tab and select 3D. Select the selected layers from the source pull-down and click Create. Next click on the Layers tab and select the Head layer. Then click on the 3D tab and select Current View, which changes the Properties window above showing the 3D camera properties. In the lower left of the 3D camera properties panel, select the checkbox to enable stereo rendering and in the Type pull-down select Lenticular. The lens direction is always vertical for 3D and the lines per inch or LPI is always 60 for view through 3D lenticular lens. The default setting for the distance or the distance from the camera to the focal plane is 0 and the depth or amount of perceived depth is 5. The distance setting we use for the 4x6 3D test project first layer the head is 90. Positive numbers create a forward depth and negative numbers will create a backward depth. At view through we use a range of negative 90 to positive 90. The depth setting is how much the 3D is going to shift from left to right when you move looking at the 3D image. The greater the depth value number, the greater the possibility of depth, but too much depth will cause the 3D image to go out of focus. At view through for Photoshop CS6 we use a depth setting of 5 to 10 for forward positive depth settings and 5 to 30 for reared negative depth settings. The depth setting we use on the 4x6 3D test project first layer, the head, is 10. 
When creating your own 3D design, you will need to test your depth and distance settings by printing as you go. Changing the settings is necessary. We normally do 10 or more test prints while creating a 3D project. Next, select the remaining layers and repeat the previous steps. Our settings for each layers are, the head has a distance of 90 and a depth of 10. The view through logo has a distance of 50 and a depth of 5. The body has a distance of negative 25 and a depth of 20. The tail has a distance of negative 40 and a depth of 20. And the background or the great hall has a distance of negative 90 and depth of 10. Your final settings may be different. To see the effects of your 3D design, you will need to make several test prints. First, save the PSD file. It's a good idea to save often, then save the file again, but this time as a JPEG. Go to File, Save As, and under Format, select JPEG, and save the image quality to 12, the maximum. We found it quicker and safer to crop the 3D image to size for printing as a JPEG, with all the layers locked. Rather than possibly changing the 3D effect at the interlaced layers by cropping the PSD file. Next, open the JPEG file, go to the Image tab, followed by Canvas Size and change the width to 6 and the height to 4. Click OK and proceed. Now go to File, Print, and make sure you use the correct printer property settings. Make as many test prints and changes as necessary to give your 3D project your desired results. You can view your 3D print with either a view through 3D frame or by attaching to a 60 LPI lenticular lens blank. Hold the lenticular lens lines facing down. Take a piece of tape and press down on one of the top corners of the lens. Lift the tape up to raise the clear release liner. Gently pull down the release liner to expose one inch of the adhesive on top of your lens. Remove the tape from the corner and attach it to the center of the release liner creating a curl. Do not crease the release liner. The curl will keep the adhesive off the print until you are ready to attach the lens. Place the image on a flat surface about waist high. Rotate the image 90 degrees so that the interlaced lines in the image run left to right. Place the lens lines facing up on top of your image. Pinch both sides of the lens just below the release liner between your thumbs and index fingers. Rotate your wrist back toward you, lifting the exposed adhesive away from the photo while pressing the bottom portion of the lens against the photo. In all 3D designs, there will be an element that you can focus on that will assist with proper lens alignment. With this design, we found the dinosaur's head to be that element. With the lens on the image, you should see that the dinosaur's head is choppy or broken. Make slight adjustments moving the lens sides up and down until you see the dinosaur's head focus. Use a rocking motion to move your body in and out over the photo to ensure the dinosaur's head properly shifts, not diagonally or broken. Once the 3D image and lens are aligned, keep pressure on the lens to prevent moving and release your index fingers to lay the lens flat on the photo. Starting at the middle of the lens, move your fingers up over the exposed adhesive to press it to the photo. Turn the photo face down and insert the attached edge into the laminator. Lift the bottom of the photo where it is not attached to the lens and reach in to grab and remove the clear release liner. Roll the photo and lens through the laminator while holding the photo off the adhesive until the photo is pulled through. In order to use the view through 3D frame, you must first trim the photo to a 4x6. Make your first trim on the bottom of the image, and make sure that you cut as straight as possible to help with proper alignment. Next, trim off the remaining sides. Finally, grab your 4x6 3D photo frame and take off the silicone band. Remove the sample photo and replace it with your own. Make slight adjustments as necessary. Once your image is aligned with the lenticular lens, reattach the silicone band. 